Today I want to show you guys how I turn this bumper into a flat pattern, like this. So if you've seen my last video, then you know that this is a bumper for my Jeep Cherokee. I designed this and I've been looking for a way to turn this solid body here, the bumper and tire carrier and everything, into a flat pattern. Because as you can see, these are solid bodies over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys kind of how I built this bumper and then also how I flattened it out into a flat pattern that I can cut on my CNC table. The biggest thing that I found with designing a bumper is the fact that you got to keep things organized. So you can see here I've got this Jeep references. This is the back end of my Jeep right now. You've got the hatch, you got the tail lights, and then you've got these D-ring mounts that I've fabricated. And one other thing is I've made a side profile sketch of the quarter panel. So these angles line up with the very back edge of the quarter panel. And when I design the bumper, I want to I want to pick up that geometry and basically just extend the bumper out kind of completing this little corner here so I'm using this as a constraint layer basically this is what I'm going to build the bumper off of let's uh, start with a new component and we're just gonna call this bumper so now Everything that I draw for the bumper is going to be in here. As long as I have this little radial dot on this on this component. I always I always try to keep the uh, bumper sketches inside the bumper component. Let's sketch on this plane. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to push P for project. I'm going to project this line these lines I want to project the bottom edge of this uh, tail light and the hatch and we'll just use that for now so from those lines I'm going to start just drawing the outline of this bumper using the projected lines is kind of the shape of the bumper I want. We'll do this. We add a horizontal constraint to this. We'll move this up. And I want to make a coincident constraint with this corner and that line. Use a trim tool, cut the excess off. You might get this warning just because we cut the tail of it off but that's pretty much the raw shape of this bumper seeing how this center section is now kind of a bluish shade that tells me that we have a complete shape no broken lines no nothing so we can hit finish sketch and let's extrude that out now we'll extrude it out to um, I want it to kind of cover this section over here. So we'll do um, minus six and a half. So that's the basic shape. So the next thing I want to do is I want to knock down these edges right here. Kind of make it so it's not a 90 degree corner. I would just want to kind of uh, chamfer the edges almost. So we'll hit sketch, sketch on this plane. With the line tool, seeing how we're we're sketching on this surface, I can already pick up the the outer edges of this bumper. So we'll just draw a line here. These are only reference lines. So I'm going to use these lines to create a plane, and then later on that plane, I'll draw another sketch to kind of cut this corner off. So we'll. We'll do that um, 
And we'll do this one. Length doesn't matter. Dimension. We'll do two and a half. So that sketch is finished. So on this sketch, what I can do now is I can create an angled plane. So an angled plane with this line. Now let's do uh, 30 degrees, and we'll do we'll do the same thing for the bottom. We'll angle it. Let's do 45. So now we can sketch on these planes. Just choose this top corner. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle that I know is going to cut this corner off. This is the simplest way you can do it. You finish your sketch. We'll draw this out. And we'll, it's already cutting. Um, what we don't want to do is cut our tab here. As you can see, it's cutting into it. We can hit objects to cut, and we don't want to cut the D ring mount. So that looks good. We'll hit OK. Not really worried about this chunk yet because we're going to come and take that corner off, anyways. Um, now we'll do the same thing for this bottom edge. Draw on the plane. Draw a box big enough to cut the entire section off. Extrude. Draw that guy down. Uncheck our D-ring mount. That looks pretty good. So let's cut this chunk off here. So if I sketch on this top surface, we can kind of pick up the taillight here as one of our sides. Actually, we can just draw a square that we know is bigger. We want to do a collinear constraint of this line and this projected line. Hit escape, and we can drag this over, finish sketch. All right. Now we can extrude this up. There we go. I made a mistake here. That first sketch that I did of this kind of raw shape of the bumper, I should have done it on this plane here. But I think we can easily fix that just by rolling back in the timeline. And we can uh, redefine sketch plane. And we'll click on the back of this tail light. And that has moved it in. That's kind of a basic shape of it. One thing that I want to do is kind of knock this corner off now. I'm going to create another reference so we can cut this corner off. So we'll go back to this sketch, edit sketch. We're going to project this line here. Draw another line that's vertical that we know is longer. Do a collinear of this line. Slide this dude down. Actually, we project this top and bottom. Cut the edges off here. So now we can do a plane through three points. We'll do this point this point and this point that's going to make a plane to where it connects all three of those dots and then we just do like we did before sketch on that plane draw a box big enough we know it's going to cut entirely through that plane extrude cut that off get rid of our d-ring mount It's taking shape. Forgot to make a change to our extrusion here. When we changed the uh, plane that we were working off of. Let's do minus nine. We kind of missed our corner here. And we can do the same thing for this bottom edge here. I'm gonna hide 
this sketch so we can see what we're doing. We want to do another three point plane. This guy, this guy, and we'll go with that guy. Sketch. Extrude this out. Oops. Forgot to take our D ring off. Bam. There we go. So this kind of gives you the shape of the bumper that we're looking for. Um, I, on my other design, I continued this edge over, but um, just for this example, I'm not going to do that. Um, next thing I want to do is uh, shell this thing out. So if I hit shell, I'm going to do an inside thickness of 3 16 the next thing I do I want to do is I want to cut relief into these corners here each one of these lines is going to be a bend line so I have to remove material there because I plan on bending this by hand so couldn't really find a real good way to do this other than manually if I would have drawn this in sheet metal over here you know, I could have just done flanges and everything and made a flat pattern out of it. But, uh, seeing how I didn't know the angles, the shapes, uh, you know, where the holes have got to be, designing it as a solid body first was easier. And then now I can just come back and do a plane along an edge or along a path and kind of pick where I want my tab to start so if we wanted to cut this corner I want to cut a relief cut in this corner so I can see where to bend it so we'll hit OK on that sketch on this plane I'm going to project this top edge, this bottom edge, and now all I'm going to do is create two perpendicular lines to the uh, projected lines. And seeing as I know that we're doing this, we've got a 3 16 wall, 0.875. Eight seven five. That's going to locate this little notch at the direct center of this point. So if we hit finish sketch, and we extrude this geometry this way. It's going to cut into the top surface of this bumper. That'll give us kind of a tab to fold down on. This is kind of a time consuming process so it's pretty much just a rinse and repeat from here. The only thing is if you want to just cut the line all you'd have to do is come back to your feature and we'll do two sided and I could cut that entire line off. What this actually does is if you can imagine, if these two plates were two 3 16 plates meeting on a corner, what this geometry has actually done is it's, it's made the inside corners of these two plates meet while still keeping the shape. So I've essentially made a groove to where you can put a weld in there. So say let's we're going to weld this top edge, but we want to fold these this edge right here. We're going to do pretty much the same method, except what we're going to do is instead of cutting the entire edge, we're just going to make a tab. 
So if we sketch on this plane, project this geometry again, hit OK, line tool, perpendicular line, perpendicular line, 0.1875. I'm going to use an equal constraint. That'll center those two up. Extrude that out to cut it. This can be kind of difficult. Cut that out. So we got the edge here. So if we wanted to make a tab, we got to make another plane. So what I do is I just kind of I eyeball this because it really doesn't matter. Do about a half an inch or so. And then I'll sketch on this plane again. P for project. And we'll project that geometry we just drew. Finish sketch. Extrude that out. And I'll stop that short of the corner. Do that again. Along the path. Make that tab that big. Hit sketch. Sketch on this corner. Project. Project that geometry. Okay, finish sketch, extrude, then you uh, cut the rest of the corner off. So now you have a pattern to where it gives you space to fold these two surfaces down to meet each other, and it'll give you a gap to weld into. And you do that for any of these that you want to actually fold. You could fold them all. Um, or you can do like I've done and I've separated this top layer off so that way cutting it on the machine I don't need a five and a half foot piece of steel all I need is to be able to cut half of this layer and then I can fold the rest of this down if that makes sense and you would do that for every edge like I make these corners here, I'd fold all these corners together because the shape is small enough. And then I'd make these two corners fold together also. And you just you'd make a weld seam here, a weld seam here, and a weld seam across the top and down these two sides. So it basically it gives you the shape that you want. Now that we've got our bumper shape here, we want to copy this to make our flat pattern out of. So what I do is I'll select this top layer here, a component, we'll make this uh, flat. And all we're going to do is copy this one body, our bumper, to our flat pattern. It'll give us an option to move it. We'll just move it anywhere just so we can see it. So now we have a direct copy of this sketch here. Okay, now we've got our copy. We can move over to our flat pattern. So the next thing we want to do is we want to separate each one of these surfaces out so we can flatten them. So the best way that I have found to do this is to come over here to the surface tabs and we're going to hit unstitch. Now what this is going to do is every face that you select it's going to separate it from the body itself. So we're going to separate this top surface first. So it doesn't look like anything happened there. So with it unstitched here now what we can do is move it. So let's move this up. And now you can see what that unstitching did. It's basically taken this top surface and removed it from the rest of the drawing. 
And what I can do now is I can align it with a surface that I want to cut on. And let's just choose this XY plane. So now this is aligned with that plane. We'll move it over. M for move. Hit OK. So that, that would be one piece that we would cut. Now let's separate these two from the rest of the body. So we'll go unstitch. Unstitch this surface. Hit OK. We're going to hit M for move. And we're just going to move this dude off. Hit OK. Come back to solid. Hit align. We want to align this surface with this surface. Now we can just move this dude over to the rest of our flat pattern. Hit OK. So we've got our one surface here. So we want to connect this surface to that surface. Hit on stitch this plane. I'm going to hit A for align. And align this body with this plane. Let's move that up. Now I want to align this piece with the corresponding part on this piece. Bam, there we go. So what that does now, is that gives us our flat pattern with the gap for us to fold this sheet metal down. So you'd repeat this for the rest of you know, your surfaces. Every single one of these you'd have to do that same, that same process. So it's a little bit time consuming, but uh, this is probably the best way for me to make kind of a uh, foldable bumper. Once we've got these on a flat pattern, we can make uh, some DXFs. I'm going to capture that position just so it doesn't move. So if we look at this surface, I want to create a new component. And we'll say that this is our D, DXFs. So inside of our DXFs, all we're going to do is create a sketch. And then this plane here and what we're going to do is project these to that sketch. Now one thing you want to watch here if you wanted these two pieces to be actually connected you have to delete these projected lines here otherwise when you go to cut this thing out then these two pieces it'll cut the profile and everything and then it'll cut these tabs right off which it's not the end of the world but you know it's kind of kind of defeats the purpose of what we're doing here and there you go I turn everything else off except our DXFs this is what the CNC will actually cut off and you just basically import that into your cam software and cut it out so i hope this helps you guys um i couldn't really find a video that kind of explained how to do this and i don't know if this is the best way maybe there's a better way but this is the way that i did it so the next step is to actually cut it on our cnc machine but i'm going to save that for another video so I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.